All right, welcome back everybody. Today, we are gonna be making a chocolate coffee stout. So I haven't made a stout in a decently long time. Uh, the last one was the bourbon stout that I made. That was pretty good, um, but I think that base stout could have kind of been improved on a little bit. So our base recipe this time is going to be more of the American stout style. So it's slightly hoppier, much roastier uh, than the oatmeal stout base that I made for the uh, bourbon stout that I made last year. So this type of beer already has a pretty strong roasty chocolate and coffee kind of character to it, but we're gonna amp that up with actually putting in real coffee and cacao nibs um, into the secondary fermentation to give it that really strong chocolate coffee uh, flavor. So hopefully this ends up being a moderately strong beer with a relatively full body and uh, really strong coffee chocolate notes, but not too strong. Um, but basically, yeah, it's gonna be a, a pretty fun brew day, I think. So this is our recipe for five and a half gallons into the fermenter. We're looking at 14 pounds of British Pale Two Row Malt, uh, one pound of Carafa Three, one pound of Crystal 60, one pound of chocolate malt, and half a pound of black barley. So that should give us a, uh, hopefully, a pre-boil OG of about 1.057 a actual OG of 1.078. As far as hops go, I'm using one and a half ounces of Northern Brewer at 60 minutes, so just a simple bittering addition. Uh, there's no further hop additions after that. The Northern Brewer hops that I got from my local home brew store are 9.9% .9 alpha acid, so uh, that gives us an estimated IBU of about 44, uh, which is, yeah, it's kinda high, but it's an American stout. Um, and it should just purely be bitterness uh, and no other sort of hot uh, flavors associated with that single bittering addition. So hopefully that works out well. So we're gonna mash this at 154 degrees uh, for 60 minutes. Uh, and uh, basically that's a little bit on the higher end of the temperature spectrum for mashing. The effect of that is to create a, uh, a beer that has a little bit more mouthfeel to it. Uh, so hopefully we end up with a little bit higher of a final gravity, shooting for around 1.02 uh, to 1.021, something like that. Um, now I usually mash for 90 minutes, but in this case we'll do 60 minutes, and that's because I'm pretty sure I can still get pretty good conversion during that period of time, but I also don't want to end up uh, leaving those roasted malts in the mash for too long, uh, just because sometimes that can kind of overdo the roasty uh, and sometimes acrid character of those malts. And I want to be able to keep my mash pH under control because with the high percentage of roasted malts that pH is going to drop quite a bit and the beer could become pretty acidic. So I've got some baking soda on standby in case that actually happens. And speaking of pH and water and stuff, this is going to be the first malty beer that I'm using uh, a modified water profile for. So instead of having a higher ratio of sulfates to chlorides, it's gonna flip the other way around. We're gonna have a higher ratio of chloride to sulfates. Um, and so our totals in parts per million are gonna be 52 parts per million of calcium, eight parts per million of magnesium, 65 parts per million of sodium, 72 parts per million of sulfate, 115 parts per million of chloride, and 55 parts per million of carbonate. So in order to achieve that profile, these are the additions we're making. Three grams of gypsum, one gram of epsom, one gram of calcium chloride, and one gram of calcium carbonate. Uh, so hopefully that gets us a good balanced profile that has a little bit more uh, malty character to it um, and doesn't end up being too acidic. So we'll find out. Take a pH sample if it will into the mash, of course. Um, and as far as yeast goes, we're using two packets of the Nottingham Ale Yeast. Um, I probably could get away with one, but adding two is just a good security measure to make sure that that fermentation goes the way I want it to, because the last thing I want in this beer is some sort of yeast-created fruity ester from a slight amount of underpitching. It is going to be relatively high gravity, so hopefully it works out. Uh, so right now we're heating up my strike water. Um, I already took a Camden tablet and uh, added a portion of that to this um, so that I could remove the chlorine and chloramines from the water. And uh, this right here is um, my addition of brewing salts that I've dissolved in some water as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and add those in now and stir it all up. Okay, so we hit our strike water temperature. Uh, it was time to pull out the heat stick and uh, put the grain in and wrap this whole thing up.
Okay, so uh, here is our mash temperature. It's 155, so <laughs> off by one degree higher though. Um, higher is better considering that I'm gonna lose about a degree or two though over the course of this. So um, I think we're good to go and we'll wrap this all up. Now I'm just going to grab a quick sample for the pH. Should just be able to pull that right from the bottom out here. Okay, so that's 155. Okay, so I took the uh, pH strip here and just got an approximate idea of what the pH looks like. Yeah, I, I'd say right now it's between 5.0 and 5.5, um, which is about where we want to be. Hopefully it turns out good. Uh, just good news, it means I don't have to unwrap everything and add baking soda. Okay, time for the moment of truth. Let's find out what the uh, final mash temperature uh, was see how we did over the course of it. I'm sorry, that's upside down. Oh, look at that 154.4. We didn't lose any temperature at all. That's a first for me, um, and I definitely attribute that to keeping my stovetop burner on as low as it gets. Uh, not so hot that it scorches anything, um, but just enough to keep the uh, heat escape from the bottom under control. Uh, so that's really cool. Now for the fun part. By fun, I mean not fun at all. Alright, so we just had our boil right now, and uh, I came very, very close to having a boil over here. This had one of the most aggressive hot breaks I think I've ever seen in any of my beer that I've brewed. That's so much hot break. Anyway, since we've basically started our boil now, we're going to add that 60 minute bittering edition. The only hop edition, and that's an ounce and a half of Northern Brewer. So our uh, pre-boil OG sample is in, and uh, it's reading about 1.058, so hopefully you can see that, um, which is right on target. So our estimated pre-boil OG was 1.057, so all things are looking up right now. So our 60-minute uh, boil is just finished up right now. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the original gravity sample right now. Oh my god, that was stupid. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> Alright, so the brew went pretty well, all things considered. Um, 
You did have a couple scary moments where we almost had a boil over, um, but other than that, everything was actually pretty solid and straightforward. Um, so there's a couple things left to do. Uh, I'm just gonna finish cooling down the work here, and then I gotta rehydrate the rest of my dry yeast. And then once the work is actually like very cool, down to like 60 or less, then we're gonna pitch it um, and uh, let it sit. So fermentation for this is pretty simple. Uh, it's just gonna be the standard ale temperature range, 65 to 68-ish for just about two weeks. I've heard that the uh, Nottingham yeast uh, rips through fermentation really fast, so maybe it'll be less than that, but we'll see. Bottom line is, once all of the fermentation is complete, uh, we're gonna transfer to a secondary vessel, a secondary fermenter, and in that vessel, we're gonna add two ounces of cold brewed coffee and six ounces of cacao nibs. Uh, so that should give us that boosted uh, coffee and chocolate flavor that uh, really hopefully will complement the richness, I hope, um, of this stout. So uh, if my gravity is just high enough, I might actually be able to technically qualify this as an imperial stout. Uh, so we'll let the fermented beer sit on the cacao nibs and the coffee for probably like three or four days. At this point, I'll be taking samples just to see how the flavor is progressing. Uh, I don't want it to get too overboard. Um, so once we're good, I'll pull it off the coffee and cacao nibs and uh, we'll bottle. So hopefully, uh, this beer doesn't take too long to be ready, but if it is in the higher percentage alcohol region with a roasty beer, we could be looking at a month or two. So I figured now is probably as good a time as any to talk about uh, how to rehydrate the dry ale yeast again. Um, it's just important to rehydrate the dry ale yeast, even though they usually say that you don't need to. You can technically just sprinkle it on top of your work, but uh, there's a lot of evidence out there that suggests if you sprinkle your dry ale yeast right into the wort, you're going to actually kill off a good portion of the cells just simply because they're going to be shocked. Um, so what you want to do is rehydrate them over a certain period of time and then pitch that um, into your wort and that actually generally results in a higher rate of uh, yeast survival. Um, but basically first you take some uh, water, pre-boil about a cup or cup and a half uh, of water and let it slowly cool um, over time down to about 110 to 90 degrees. Uh, in that temperature range, you are safe to put the yeast into that water. So what you want to do now is <coughs> let's take a sanitized packet of your yeast and some sanitized scissors. I'm going to go ahead and dump that in. Now I got two packets, so I'm going to do this again. And then you want to take a sanitized fork or spoon or something and just stir it up gently until it blends in. Now if you want you can add some sugar to this water when you boil it to give them a little bit more of a boost, um, but they're going to be just fine. Uh, basically what this is doing is just waking up the yeast uh, so that they're ready to go. Uh, so basically then we're going to cover that and uh, Wait until our wort is the appropriate temperature and then we'll go ahead and pitch. I just finished cooling off our uh, original gravity sample, so I hope that comes into focus. It's looking uh, at about 1.074, so it's actually four points lower uh, than our target. So uh, definitely lost a little bit of efficiency, I think, with the big beer that this was. Uh, but that's okay. Four points in the grand scheme of things is not bad. Uh, so hopefully this does pretty well. All right, so now the temperature of the wort is down to 60, so it's time to uh, go ahead and transfer all that over. And we're going to aerate it just by splashing it straight down into the fermenter. Okay, so our wort has cooled down to the appropriate temperature, so now we're good to go to pitch this yeast. And we're going to swirl it out, make sure it's good to go. Alright, now we ferment for two weeks, see if 
see how it goes. Okay, so this fermentation um, didn't quite go the way I expected it would. Uh, nothing bad happened, I'll say that, but uh, basically what happened was I pitched the yeast and um, the fermentation happened extremely fast. I'm talking the high krausen was only for about three days. Uh, after that, it just ripped right through fermentation pretty much entirely uh, within about five days. I took a gravity reading at the end of visible fermentation and saw that it was about 1.030. Um, so I thought, okay, maybe it still has a little more attenuation to do. So I uh, ramped up the temperature to 72 degrees, uh, gradually kind of raising it up towards that higher temperature range to encourage more attenuation. Um, I was able to get it down to a final gravity of about 1.028. Uh, not, not actually as low as I was hoping. Um, so that makes this more of a sweet stout. Uh, yeah, it's been over two weeks in the fermenter. It's done fermenting. Uh, I am going to go ahead and move this into the secondary stage where we go ahead and add our uh, cacao nibs and some coffee. That being said, I think I might dial those additions back considering that the uh, percentage ABV is a little bit lower than I expected. But I mean, all in all, it tastes great. Uh, it's definitely going to be a great final product. It's just not as high in alcohol as I was shooting for, but that's not really that big of a deal. But we're going to go ahead and transfer this over into a secondary fermenter, um, and then I'm going to add the cacao nibs and the coffee. Okay, so uh, as you can see, there's stuff in here now. So. I added uh, one ounce of a 50-50 blend between hot brewed and cold brewed coffee. reason for the blend is because I wanted the robustness of the hot uh, brewed coffee and the smoothness of the cold brewed coffee, so I thought combining them might work. And then I added four ounces of cacao nibs. Now these numbers differ from what initially was in the recipe when we had this on brew day. And the reason for that, I dialed it back because uh, basically we don't have as much alcohol in the final brew as I was previously expecting. So because there's not as much alcohol there to mask flavors and um, cut down on any bitterness, uh, we added uh, a little bit less of these ingredients since they're both relatively bitter. So basically we're going to let this sit here for uh, three to four days in the cold. Uh, and uh, once it's good to go and the flavor is where I want it to be, then we'll take it out and uh, transfer over to the bottling bucket and bottle. Okay, so I ended up leaving the cacao nibs and the coffee in the fermenter in cold storage for about maybe four or five days, I think. Um, turned out to have a pretty good flavor. This particular brew needed about three weeks or so to actually fully mature and let those flavors round out. Because there's roasted malt in there, it tends to need a little more time to round out and mellow out. I'm sure that as this uh, gets a little bit older, it'll get a little bit better, but it's definitely to a point now where I'm happy with it. And unfortunately, it's been a little while since I've been able to upload a new video to the channel. So uh, thankfully, this is now ready and uh, we're good to go. So I ended up calling it Hello Darkness Mild Friend, uh, and it ended up being about 6.1% ABV and 44 IBUs. Um, so it's definitely not an imperial stout. Uh, because of the higher finishing gravity, it technically qualifies as a sweet stout, um, although the flavor is not necessarily something I would necessarily say is a sweet flavor. Uh, but I'll get into that more, of course, in the tasting section. As far as a simple, nice, um, tasty example of a stout that's not too strong, uh, it's a great go-to. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and pour this now. this glass is a bit smaller. Um, anyway, it is a nice, dark, very black color. Um, and it pours with a medium brown, kind of dark tan head. Um, seems to be pretty nice fine bubbles in there. Uh, it's uh, going away relatively quickly though. Unfortunately, it doesn't have too great of head retention. Um, but that's all right. As far as aroma, I get a lot of nice woody chocolate notes. Uh, so that's the nice thing about the cacao nibs is it's not like a chocolate bar. It's just, it's chocolate before it becomes actually chocolate. Um, so it has kind of a nutty, woody uh, sort of character to it. Um, don't detect any sort of alcohols on the nose. So uh, let's go ahead and take the first swig. Hmm. 
So the body of the spear is actually not as full as I would have expected given its higher finish and gravity. Uh, it's definitely a medium to medium thin body. Yeah. Uh, which is unfortunate. I was kind of hoping there'd be a little bit more body uh, with this. Um, but that's okay. I think I was also anticipating more alcohol, so that would have also contributed to a little bit more body, uh, more mouthfeel. Um, but overall, it's okay. So as far as flavor goes, uh, the roastiness is definitely uh, very subtle. Um, not really in your face at all, which is nice. Um, but uh, the coffee and the chocolate do come through very strong. However, not necessarily in the ways that I was really hoping for. Um, the coffee comes through as a little bit harsh. Um, it's a little bitter. Unfortunately, I didn't think this through before I actually just tossed the coffee in, but uh, I just used whatever coffee was on hand. Um, and I realized that I probably should have actually specifically used dark roast, like espresso roast coffee, uh, because that tends to have a lot more roastiness and fuller flavor, and it looks like I had light roast coffee in, uh, available to me when I made this. Uh, so the lighter roast flavor uh, is generally a little bit more bitter, a little uh, more fruity, nutty kind of coffee. Um, and it works fine in, in this. I just think it would have been better uh, and worked much better with the roastiness if I had used like an espresso blend. Um, as far as the chocolate goes though, it's really great because it's like, a, like I said, it's a nutty kind of uh, woody chocolate flavor. So, um, so definitely more of the, if you've ever had uh, very, very dark chocolate, uh, like almost 100% dark chocolate, you'll know the pleasant bitterness associated with that, but you'll also know there's a little bit of nutty woody flavor in there, and that's what I'm talking about. And that's great because I don't necessarily want to be drinking a chocolate bar. Um, I think that it actually complements the roastiness quite well. So in the future, I think I'll probably end up using cacao nibs again to get the chocolate flavor, and uh, maybe a little extra chocolate malt. Um, but. Uh, yeah, a little extra chocolate malt, a little extra cacao nibs, um, and then I'm going to use the dark roast coffee to make this a really more nice rounded out beer. But overall, uh, very happy with it. It's definitely a good go-to beer, like I said, um, but it uh, definitely needs a little bit of improvement, I think. But overall, still fun to brew, still a good time, and I definitely learned something about working with chocolate and coffee adjuncts. So if you like this video, please let me know by dropping a like or a comment. Uh, if you do decide to brew this beer, let me know. I hope it works out well for you. So if you do like watching me brew my beer and drink my beer and talk about my beer and all things beer, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you do, click that notification bell icon down there because that'll let you know every single time I upload a new video. Uh, I like to try and upload a video at least every month. Uh, if, if I can, I like to do it more frequently, but sometimes as we all know, life gets in the way. But anyway, for my current subscribers, thank you very much for sticking with me and let me know what you think about the stuff that I do. Uh, and I always, always appreciate anything you guys have to say. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and finish off this beer and I'll uh, catch you in the next one. So, cheers.